Okay, I'm going to do a laws lesson about thought reflection because some of you are still so unbelievably confused about what this means. You think it's not working. You think you need evidence that it's working. This person's written, how do you know when someone is just doing their life, busy at work, etc., or reflecting your self-concept? In this video, I'll explain to you guys that are still so confused about how they're receiving your thoughts and what it looks like in the 3D. So excited for the kickoff of the challenge. Yes, guys, the challenge is on the Summer Loving Challenge. So guys, if you haven't joined the Subconscious Laws Squad, it's the place to be because right now we are doing the Summer Loving Challenge. It has dropped. We have dropped a super banging, old, nostalgic, grease, dirty dancing style playlist with the most romantic, gorgeous songs to get you in the mood for Summer Loving. Now, if you're in winter like me, well, you probably won't be in the mood for Summer Loving, but you can use your imagination, okay? And the whole key of this challenge is to use your imagination to conjure up scenes and inner conversations to create the beautiful life you want with your specific person. And we're using the summer as our inspiration, whether it's being at the drive-ins or vacations away together or walking hand in hand on the beach. We're actually going to give you visualization prompts to help you imagine a life with your SP whether there's someone you know or not. It can just be someone new, okay? So guys, come and join us in the squad. The squad is only $50 a month or $35 if you join for the year. And I highly recommend you come and join us for the full year because when you do so, you are kept accountable. We have mentors in there. They are people who really teach the law of assumption correctly and have had their own success. Plus all the squaddies in there, a lot of them have been there a long time and know how to answer you. You get your questions answered in the Q&A by either them or the mentors. And if you miss getting your question answered, there's another Q&A the next week. We also have inside the challenge, an opportunity for you to ask questions and be kept accountable every Friday with our check-ins. Plus inside this challenge, I'm going to be dropping a guided meditation, a beautiful romantic one, and a sleep tape. So I dropped the intro video yesterday. So come and join us now so you don't miss out. You can join the challenge anytime during the month of August. It goes for the entire month. We have activities from Monday to Friday to keep your mind right. Come and join us now. So guys, why do you need evidence? Why do you constantly need evidence of what it is you're changing? Because you're not changing it. So let me read this again. How do you know when someone is just doing their life busy with work? So this person's got an assumption in that part. They're just doing life and busy with work, meaning they're not thinking about this person. This person has written the question. So they've got an assumption that the person's not even thinking about them and not reflecting their new self-concept, right? That's what's in that first part of the question, an assumption that it's not reaching their specific person and they're just going on with their life or reflecting your self-concept. So you guys have got an assumption, have you, a lot of you, that what thought reflection means with your specific person is they're walking around all day <gasps> catching thoughts from you. <gasps> I'm thinking about them now. Oh, I wonder what they're doing now. Thinking about you obsessively, not getting on with their own lives because they're thinking about you, reflecting your new self-concept. Gee, she looks so great in her latest Instagram picture. Gee, her self-concept must be really high. Guys, a lot of you are just like do lally thinking that, what, your specific person's going to walk around all day obsessively thinking about you and this is how it reflects. Are you not just doing life and busy with work whilst you think about your specific person right now, darling? Those of you who aren't doing that, who aren't busy at work and getting on with their life whilst thinking about this specific person, they're the ones that are doing this wrong. They're the ones that are obsessing. If you are not able to get on with your life or be busy at work because you're so obsessed with manifesting a specific person or constantly trying to send out thoughts that they can reflect from you, you are doing this wrong. Literally, guys, this is all manifestation is. It's what you're currently doing, but you're going to do it differently because what you're currently thinking is being sent out. And if what you're currently thinking is shit, you're going to change it from shit to not shit. You don't have to do anything different. You don't have to stop your life. You don't have to stop being busy. You don't have to put a hold on seeing friends. You don't have to sit in an ashram and meditate. You are literally just thinking different thoughts consistently and not allowing the old thoughts in. 
Now, if that's the way you need to manifest, how do you think it's then getting reflected to the other person and they're receiving it? How are they acting in the 3D if how you're acting is normal? How you should be acting when you're manifesting a specific person is normal, right? And some of you think this is a whole obsessive thing, that you need to obsessively send out thoughts so they obsessively receive them and obsessively start thinking about you. The aim here, guys, isn't to make a person walk around all day obsessively thinking about you. Even if you did that, that doesn't guarantee shit. Like, uh, guys, some of you are really uh, lost about this. I have a course called Make Them Obsessed. But in that course, we're going to the end. Yes, we are sending out thoughts about ourselves so that that person has obsessive thoughts about us. But just the obsessive thoughts isn't enough, right? Just the new reflection reaching them isn't enough. You've got to go to the end of what you actually want with them. Do you just want them sitting there all day obsessed about you but not taking any action and you never get to the end of actually being with them? Some of you are so obsessed with this idea of thought reflection being this obsessional thing. You're kind of forgetting to go right to the end of what is it you actually want with that person. Now, at least this person has actually asked about reflecting your self-concept. And I'm assuming that means this person has done the work and is now changing their concept of self. The thing she's got caught up in is like needing the validation in the 3D that the person is receiving that new self-concept. Oh, then you're doing for that? Guys, you don't need evidence. You need to trust in the unseen. And if you don't understand what that means, please go and watch my last must-watch video about Neville Goddard's meaning of drop it. It's just on my YouTube now. So if reflecting your self-concept simply means you are working on you, you are changing your concept of self, they'll receive it. You don't need to see evidence that they'll receive it. You don't need to check that they're receiving it. You don't need to hear that they're receiving it. They're receiving it. Now, when you'll get evidence that they've received it, I'll tell you what the evidence will look like. It'll be them calling you, them texting you, them saying the things that you've been thinking, them texting the things that you've been thinking, them turning up the way you've been expecting them to and getting to the end of what it is you want. But so many of you are relying on the 3D right now and some of you aren't even talking to your person. Some of you are in no contact. How in the hell are you going to get 3D validation when you're not even speaking to the person and you're blocked on everything? You're going to have to trust. You're going to have to trust it's working and you can't possibly devise a whole lot of things in the 3D to reassure you and give you this constant reassurance so you feel secure in the idea that they're thinking of you. Assume they're thinking of you. Assume they're receiving the new self-concept of you. Because if you really were in the new self-concept thoughts, you would be thinking so well of yourself, that you would assume they're receiving those thoughts. You wouldn't be asking me, are they receiving it? So just, just understand in this question, how do you know when someone is just doing their life busy with work or reflecting your self-concept? So what this person is expecting is 3D validation, evidence that it's working, and they've got an assumption that it's not working, that the person is ignoring them, not thinking about them. Have you got an assumption that the person is not thinking about you? Just getting on with their life? That's the problem here. If you read the question, just doing their life, you've got an assumption you're not part of that life. You've got an assumption that your thoughts aren't reaching them and they aren't having any thoughts of you or the thoughts they're having of you are bad and they have not changed. So does that tell you that you have worked on your self-concept fully and completely and changed your concept of self to someone that you know they'll be thinking about? No, it doesn't. It tells me you haven't actually fully and completely yet transformed yourself to a person who truly believes that of course they'd be thinking of you. Of course they're obsessed with you. Of course they love you because you're so fucking lovable. So in the question is implied the idea that you haven't actually fully and completely yet accepted that you're worth thinking about. This really isn't a thought reflection question. This is a, I think they're not thinking of me. I am worried they've forgotten about me question, isn't it? Guys, when you write your questions, look back at them and go, what am I really asking here? What am I really asking, Loz? What's my assumption in this fucking question? Because so many of you are so blind 
to the shit you're thinking, this person probably didn't even realise they had a really bad assumption this person's forgotten all about them or is going to forget them or the thoughts aren't going to reach them or this isn't working or I don't trust myself or I don't trust my power or I don't think they want me or I don't think this works. What's your assumption when you ask me questions? That'll tell you everything. And then you don't even need my fucking answer. You'll be like, wow, I've got a really strong story. He's not even thinking about me. What does that mean about me and my concept of self? Well, that must mean I have a concept of self that I'm forgettable, that I'm not remembered or wanted by him, that he's getting on with his life, doing his life. He's forgotten all about me because I'm forgettable, because I'm not worth thinking about. Jeez, maybe I need to work on that. You guys understanding this? Now, getting back to thought reflection, it's always working, so you don't have to worry about it. If you are so fucking lost that you don't understand that, I beg you, beg you to watch every single video I've ever done about thought reflection and especially get my free course at subconsciousloss.com called Everything You've Learned About Manifesting Is Wrong About Thought Reflection and Your Awareness of Self because some of you are still fucking confused and you think this is a magic trick. Oh, are they reaching? Is it reaching them yet? Yes, it's always reaching them. Right currently now, you must have a self-concept that hasn't really improved that much because you're not seeing anything or you're not trusting that it's working. Now, I'm not saying, saying you have to see any evidence, but the fact that you're not trusting it's working is also a problem. So either, guys, you've got to think about it this way. You're going to completely trust the process and imagine it's working in the thinking of you, or you're going to see evidence. Either way, it's fine. It's either fine that you can trust that it's working or fine that you see evidence, but you don't need the evidence. See what I'm saying? So I'm not saying if you don't see evidence, it's not working, but if after a while you've been doing this for a year and you've seen no fucking evidence... Do you think maybe you're doing this wrong? Like, I don't mean to scare some of you, and I don't, I'm not putting time limits on things. I'm not saying you must do this by a year. But a lot of you are doing this wrong. You're not trusting your power. You're not uncovering your assumptions, like the assumptions in this, this question. You're not truly actually working on the individual concepts you have of yourself, not just trying to have a good self-concept, right? You've figured out what your concepts are and you're changing them, and you've got an assumption they're receiving these thoughts and it's working. Now, if after a time you don't see any evidence, ask yourself, am I really trusting this is working? Have I really changed my concepts of self, like all the concepts I have of myself? Am I really catching my thinking, oh, shit, no, I'm not. That's why I'm asking these kind of questions of laws. So I'm not giving you any kind of restriction, guys. You can literally change someone overnight. I've Someone in my reality recently is so fucking different than they were like a month ago. It's like astounding to me sometimes, but then I, I know how this works, <laughs> Okay. And I'm not saying it has to happen in a month or a year or two days. Or I'm just saying, ask yourself, really ask yourself the question because I can't be there all the time. And if you're not doing my self-concept course or worthy as fuck for love or being in the squad right now, being held accountable for all your thinking, then you're going to need to do it yourself. And that's what the squad's good for. The squad is excellent for being kept accountable. That's why people join for the entire year at 35 a month because they like the accountability and the fact that they can come in and ask questions and someone can pick up on their assumption in their question immediately and they can catch themselves. Oh shit, yeah, I'm doing that. Thank you. Whether it's a squatty or a mentor answering you or me on a live or a mentor on a Mentor Monday live. You have to be kept accountable in your own brain by yourself if you're not being kept accountable in my squad, in my subconscious law squad. Are you keeping yourself accountable for the bad assumptions you have? Is this person keeping themselves accountable for the fact that they're not trusting this works? Are they keeping themselves accountable of, of the fact that they think this person might have forgotten about them? Are they keeping themselves accountable that they think this thought reflection isn't reaching them? Are they keeping themselves accountable and actually working on their self-concept? No? Yes? Don't know. You have to figure it out if you're not in the squad. So guys, I highly suggest you come and join us because every month we drop a challenge or a course and at the moment we've just dropped the Summer Love and Challenge. And in that, I will give you tasks to keep you accountable and to keep your mind right every Monday to Friday. So we're going to have visualization prompts, inner conversations, a meditation, a guided meditation by me, a sleep tape by me to really get your mind right, lozisms, memes, fun stuff, a playlist just dropped yesterday that you can add to that's so cool. And guys, then on a Friday, you are kept accountable with our check-ins. Some of you aren't even aware in the question you write what your assumptions truly are and 
how you don't understand certain things. So this person's got two problems going on. They don't understand what their assumptions truly are and they don't really understand thought reflection because if they really understood thought reflection, they wouldn't have to ask me, is it working? It's always fucking working. That's why he left you because you had shitty thoughts about the fact that he didn't want you. That's why he's gone. Didn't you have those thoughts? Oh, shit, I reflected them perfectly. He received them very well and loudly. Guys, everything that's created in your life right now, you created via thought reflection. It's constantly working. That's how reality is created because everything is your reflection. Think about it like I'm staring into the water here, okay? And you're constantly staring into the water. You're constantly in front of it and it's constantly reflecting you. If I put my face over a pool, I'm just constantly being reflected, aren't I? You're constantly being reflected whether it's good or bad thoughts you're sending out. So you have to become aware and be an observer of your thoughts and keep yourself fucking accountable. And that's what the squad's for if you can't do that. All right, guys, come and join us in the challenge. I hope that answered your question. And I also have heaps more videos on thought reflection. If you're really lost about this, go right back to the beginning, do my free course, go back to my YouTube, watch the Law of Assumption versus Law of Attraction playlist, uh, the Law of Assumption playlist, and understand thought reflection with any video that says thought reflection okay, or they are reflecting you. Go through my YouTube and just see which titles will actually answer those questions that you have about thought reflection, okay? Off topic, what's your skincare? I heard someone say Korean skincare. You're going, oh, thank you, darling. <laughs> yes, I use only Korean skincare now. I threw everything else in the bin um, because I gave myself psoriasis and I was like, fuck this. So I threw it all away. I don't even use um, retinol anymore. I just use Korean skincare. Occasionally I put retinol on, but not very often. Um, lots of toners, guys. The nice, gentle toners, not the acidic shit. Uh, and I just have an assumption that I'm glowing, and that's why you said it, <laughs> because that's one of my emotions. What's this? What's going on? Hang on, guys. Love that. So visualizing you're her, you're that person. Exactly, guys, because in that question was the assumption she's not the person he's thinking of, that she's not worth thinking about, right? I want a body exactly like that pick on top of you. Oh, well, guys. Our illustrator drew that. Isn't that great? So imagine you have that body then. Guys, I'm scrolling up. But I know your dominant state manifests, not your thoughts. What creates your dominant states, Mariam? Air? Are you for real? What creates your dominant state? You've been watching fuckwits that don't teach this properly and confuse the hell out of you. What creates a state? Nothingness. How do you get in that state? A state means a consistency, a consistency of thinking. <laughs> Jesus, some of you are so confused about states because so, you're watching all these states coaches who don't teach it properly and you've confused the fuck out of yourselves. Please go backwards and just read Neville if you've gone and been confused by those fuckwits. What creates a state? I'm finding it hard persisting in health issue going when it's scary. I need it gone so bad. Well, you're in the state of I need it gone, not it is gone. If you're in the state of it's gone right now, it would be gone. I'll say that again. If you were in the state of it's gone, it would eventually be gone, but you're in the state of I need it gone, I'm scared. So you need to really get a hold on your thinking. If you can, go and do my manifest health course, okay? Because if, if you're in the state of fear right now, you're going to perpetuate that state, right? So really work hard on saying, my body knows how to heal itself. Use my overnight healing meditation. It's on my YouTube it's an overnight Joseph Murphy healing prayer that I've adapted. It's on my YouTube and I also have a health affirmations guided um, a YouTube. Go and use those, please. What's this? What are your thoughts on Gypsy, Gypsy Rose's self-concept now she's divorced and pregnant? Oh, she's fascinating. I'd have to do a whole video on her. I'd have to do a video on exactly what happened because I... I originally had a story about her that she was like the victim and I don't think she is. I think the guy who murdered the mum is the victim here and I think she's a master manipulator like her mother was. I'm not saying her mother didn't manipulate her but I think um, she's got some issues, <laughs> right? Holly Hollis here. Oh, thank you, darling. How to manifest weight loss, guys. Just imagine weight is falling off you. I have a weight loss course called uh, Manifest Your Perfect Body. Manifest Your Dream Body. Okay, go on, use that. Uh, hang on, guys. Do you believe in blockages? What do you mean? In your drain? You're your only blockage, darling. You're, you're thinking as you block. What do you mean? There's no such thing as a block. You're the block. 
There's no such thing outside of you blocking you. Nothing's blocking you. You are. Tips for SP with alcohol addiction. Stop thinking they have it. And affirming he stops drinking. Stop thinking they have it. Stop thinking they're addicted. I have an old SP who is an alcoholic. He's not anymore. I don't assume he ever drinks. I don't assume he's going to be an addict. I just assumed him differently and he's different. You've got an assumption that he's like that, so he'll stay like that. And then, Joel, you need to ask yourself, how did you get yourself in that situation? Because that's about you. It's not about him. If you actually felt prioritised by him and in life, he wouldn't even do that to you. It's about you, not him. So why are you asking me about him? You're actually a long-standing follower of mine. The question should be about you, not about him. Because how did you manifest in a man who's like that in the first place? You didn't do my Be There Priority course in the squad, did you? And if you did, you didn't fucking listen. You need to do that when it goes on the website. You don't know about him. Lois, I'm so angry with my SP. Oh, well, you, you don't listen to me at all. But also, no, it's all me. Oh, thank God. I need to get my head right. Why are you angry at the guys? What the fuck are you doing being angry at them? <laughs> you don't listen to me. You don't know it's all you. Guys, you can't write, I know it's all you, and say I'm so angry with them. Like, you can't. You can't. It's like you're contradicting yourself. I'm Chinese, but I am also not Chinese. That's what you're saying. <laughs> like, what? Guys, you either get this or you don't. If you can't get angry at them, get angry at yourself. Hi, Lois, good to see you. Been missing your lives. OG follower. Oh, Teeny, hi, darling. What's the craziest everyone has you pushed out experience you had? Mm, oh, I have a lot of them. When I get people to repeat exactly what I've written down or exactly what I was thinking, like it's, and I have to, when it happens, I, I try so hard not to react, but sometimes I go a bit mute. Like I once imagined someone should have a dining room table in their house because it would make the room look better because they were eventually going to sell it. And I, as I walked out the house, I thought instead of their desk being there, there should be a dining room table and it should be about this long with this many chairs and then they could put their desk, at, put their computer at the end of the table. And I imagined it like what would fit there and then literally the next time I went to their house they opened the door and they said look you like my new dining room table and it was exactly what I pictured and I <laughs> think he thought I didn't like it or something because I was just like and he's like what do you think and I'm like oh it's great it's great <laughs> but I was just like fuck that that took a week and I hadn't seen them within that week and then the table was there and I was like we'd never discussed a table we'd never had a conversation about furniture nothing and I was just like I'm shook <laughs> and he wasn't buying any other furniture which is so weird that was one of the weirdest ones just like a dining room table swung me out hang on guys I'm scrolling down I've got to go in a minute uh I manifest a lot saying beep beep in a live during a manifest contact challenge did you you did that that was me you pushed out to me oh my god I need that thank you okay good so much progress today oh good darling what's better when manifesting sp they will come back or they already came back guys it's better to assume they're already here but if you can only assume they're coming back then say that it's up to you can you explain scripting guys scripting is literally just like I get a pen and I write shit down to script a script so if you think about scripting think about the word script right so if if someone gives you a script the doctor a prescription it's something the doctor wrote out and then that person's going to give it to you the pharmacist right at the chemist if I am writing a script for a play or a film I'm writing it down then someone's going to act it out it's writing down as if someone's going to say it or act it out for you so write it down as if the way the way you want it to be said seen experienced by you mm -hmm. thank you for changing my life laws I fixed my mindset and got accepted into my dream law school ah! Congratulations. Oh, that's wonderful news. Oh, I think that's a wonderful time to end the live. So guys, thank you so much for joining me. Please follow me here. Subscribe to me on YouTube and make sure you come and join us in the squad right now for the Summer Lovin' Challenge. It goes for the whole month of August. It's so much goddamn fun. The playlist is out. My first video is out and you're going to be getting posts Monday to Friday to keep you accountable, to get your shit, to get the love you want with your specific person, whether you know them or not. All right, guys, I'll see you soon. Bye, guys.